Hey guys, we're back for another Black Series review, taking a look at another solo figure. Today we have got our four-armed monkey type alien, Rio Durant. I'm very excited to get into this guy and see how his articulation works. He, of course, comes in that standard Black Series packaging. You can see him there in the window. We've got some artwork on the front. He's number 77 in the line. And then the back gives us a small write-up and some of that artwork again. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. All right, guys, here is everyone's, well, I guess your only option when it comes to favorite Ardenian Star Wars characters. We've got our Rio figure out of the package, and I gotta say, I am really excited to mess around with this figure, and I'm very pleased with how it's turned out, because it's a fun alien figure, and we know, generally speaking, Hasbro knocks them out of the park in this line, and I think this is a good example. So, we're gonna take a look at articulation first, of course, because as you might expect, there are a few extra things to talk about here. Now, as far as moving him around, he is, for the most part, pretty standard, but at the same time, he's obviously very different. So the head is on a ball peg. Uh, it's not the most mobile because he's got a really fat neck, so he can go up and down a little bit. He doesn't really have a lot of rocking, but he can go side to side as well. He obviously has four arms. They are all articulated the same way, except for one, which is odd, but it's not necessarily a negative. It's just odd. So the arms can go out, they're hinged, and then they all can rotate in the socket there. They might get in the way of each other, but they have full movement. There's nothing special there. Single jointed elbows, they are cut in such a way that you get just slightly better than 90 degrees. And then we've got rotation in the elbow, and then we have got hinged and rotating wrists. And what's interesting is that all of the wrists, except for this one, have vertical hinges. So like the roll of the dice, what you might want for a sword wielder. But then this one is a side to side hinge, which is just kind of odd. I'm not sure why specifically, but uh, yeah, I'll take, I'll take the up and down hinges when I can get them. Either way, it really makes no difference. It's just something that struck me as odd. Something to note. He's got an upper diaphragm joint so he can swivel all the way around. He goes up and down, back and forth, just fine, bobble side to side. He's got a waist twist so you can swivel him at the waist as well. The legs go all the way out. They kick forward, they kick back. He does not have a thigh cut though. You can kind of move the legs a little bit right there, but that's it. You can rotate at the knee. We've got a single joint at the knee and it's a little better than 90. And then at the ankle, we have got a rocker and a rotation down there. So rock all the way. It's a pretty true rock as well. And then a hinge. The hinge isn't all that great, but it does work pretty well. So, you know, he is, isn't necessarily more articulated, except for the fact that he has more joints. But he's got basically everything I expected to see. And he's incredibly mobile, even though he does, uh, you know, have a lot of extra stuff going on up top. He is a pretty articulated figure, and I'm really, really happy with what he can do. Articulation aside, because he has, you know, extra joints, so to speak, because he has multiple limbs, the sculpt is really what the big draw for this guy is. At least that's what it is for me. I can't imagine I'm alone there. Just look at this guy. He's a weird-looking kind of primate alien-type creature with four arms. You can't really go wrong with something like this. And we know Hasbro does aliens pretty well, and I think he's a good example of that. He's a pilot. He comes with his flight suit, so this is the blue suit he's got. It's got uh, pretty good accents all over it. There's little uh, kind of ports on it from uh, in certain places. We've got the zipper that's well adorned on there. You've got all these different little uh, areas of different type of texture and color, obviously. We've got you know, some, some different texture at the shoulders, different texture at the bicep area, and then we've got these little ribbings that run down it with, with fading to different colors, you know, gray, blue, black, silver, red on his wrist. So there's a lot of little paint apps here that at first glance, you know, it may not seem he has tons, but yeah, he's actually pretty decked out as far as sculpt and paint apps. We've got the uh, rubber holster down here. So it's a, it's a rubbery material on his belt. This guy actually pegs into the leg here and the belt itself has some dry brushing. We've got a little canister on there and it looks pretty good. It's a, it's a, it's a stark white down here. I'd have rather had a little more dry brushing. It was supposed to be dirty, but it's not too big a deal. And then we've got more of that same kind of patterning that goes down on his legs, which leads to his very primate looking feet that kind of you know, fade from tan to gray black almost, which look really good. They look very natural. He stands on them very well. You know, they look mostly like hands, but uh, but they work really well to get the point across that he's definitely not a human. We've got his uh, harness up here at top, which hits his flight box, which has a cable that runs from the box to the harness, which also then runs to the comm set on his head. Uh, so his head is technically attached in one way or another to his body, but it doesn't impede articulation either, so that's pretty nice. This is a rubbery guy as well. So, yeah, I mean, as far as from 
the body standpoint, I'm 100% on board with this guy. I think it's nicely sculpted, a lot of little details here and there, a lot of paint apps, and of course he has four nicely sculpted arms that do not get in the way of articulation and really sell the fact that this is a weird alien that is going to stand out on your shelf. We of course have to talk about the head real quick. Even though it's really small, there is uh, you know something to talk about here because it is again it's a unique sculpt. We've never seen this before in this line. I get a real ET vibe when I look at this guy. He just kind of looks like that. He looks like some sort of little mole person. Uh, I just like it. It's it's a weird looking design. You can take his goggles off. We'll talk about those in a second. He's got some nice paint apps on there. He's mostly the kind of dark gray color with some hints of brown on his face. And then he's got those tiny little beady eyes and not much of an expression, but almost a little smirk in there. And of course, you can see his little commsat uh, attachment on his head there. As far as the goggles, they are removable. And I really think they're just meant to sit on him like this because while you can actually stretch them down over his face, it's so tight that I'm not really sure that's advisable. He does look pretty cool with those on there though, I'm going to say. It's just a really tight fit. It worries me if I should actually be doing that, but again, it doesn't tell me not to, so here we are. It's just a white headset with black strap and it's got a translucent red visor, so it's worth playing around with. He looks kind of cool with that on there, but at the end of the day, I think it's supposed to just sit like that all the time, and I'd rather not break it. Now, as far as accessories go, we have two different guns here, and I do think that is slightly a bit of a miss. I would have loved to have gotten four different guns for this guy, you know, just because. And it's not the end of the world. There's plenty of accessories I can use with this guy, but I just think it would have been cool. At the end of the day, though, I'm not really sure. We would have gotten four without making him maybe a deluxe release of some kind or an exclusive somewhere to bump up the price point. So we've got this gun right here, which is pretty interesting. I don't think we've seen this before. It's got a little handle on the side here. It's just cast in black plastic. He can hold this in any hand just fine. Uh, all of his hands are trigger finger hands, so you're good there. And then we've got this little pistol down here. This one is uh, one that comes in his uh, in his holster in the package, and it's honestly kind of hard to get in and out. You have to pry it out. It really doesn't want to uh, come out unless you kind of angle it to get it in there and out. Once it's out, I mean, you can put it back in. It's just odd how kind of snugly this thing fits in there. And yeah, it's just, you know, kind of a standard Star Wars blaster pistol. Nothing crazy. Again, same kind of plastic. He can hold it in any hand you wish. So there you go. Two guns for our four-armed alien. And real quick, because I know someone is probably going to ask for this particular figure, even though I really don't do this very often, here's a scale comparison for Rio to Tobias Beckett, a more standard style Black Series figure. So we've got, you know, basically a six inch figure here. You can see he's about an inch-ish smaller than Tobias, so he's pretty much in scale. He's not really tiny, he's just not tall. So I think it comes across really well. And uh, yeah, they scale up pretty nice together. I like the fact that this guy is a little shorter. It adds a little variance on your shelf, and it's obviously accurate to the film. So overall, I think this is a winner. I'm really happy with Rio. There isn't really anything to complain about with this guy. He is an exceptionally unique figure in this line, at least until we get General Grievous as far as four-armed characters go. But he's a really fun little alien, and we know Hasbro generally knocks those out of the park. And while I'm not 100% in on every solo figure in Black Series, I'm getting the ones that I'm interested in, and this one turned out to be a very good decision. So I would urge anyone who's even remotely on the fence to check this little guy out. I really doubt you would be disappointed. So that's going to do it for this look at the Star Wars Black Series Rio Durant figure from Hasbro. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.